Alice, Victor, Fort Resolution, Baby, Redbreast, Mona. These are but four of the 4,118 names listed in the National Student Memorial Register, the online registry of all those indigenous children known to have died at a residential school. There are dozens of children on that list that were not known by their full name when they died. When children are treated this way, it's deeply, deeply disturbing and heartbreaking. This registry is the creation of the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation at the University of Manitoba. And the registry was created with a one-time grant of $2.6 million, money that came from a $34 million set aside by the Trudeau government in the 2019 budget to implement recommendations from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission having to do with burial information and missing children. Now, the federal government is ready to dispense the rest of those funds to indigenous communities, more than $27 million, to find unidentified burial sites, document missing children, and honor and commemorate those children. Let us people, the indigenous people, take the lead in healing our own people. Kuda, enough is enough. It has taken more than two years to be able to hand out the money because of consultations and government red tape. The federal cabinet finally signed off this week on the plan to give the money to indigenous communities and survivor groups. 150 years ago, we were meant to be extinct as indigenous people. 150 years later, we're still here and we're in every facet of society in some way. Not as much as we want to be, but we're here. And that's to the credit of the strength and the resilience of our people. As for the speed at which the federal funds will begin to show results. We are walking at the pace of communities. Um, I know people are eager to get answers as to what we will do nationally and what will the feds do. The reality is, is this is something that will be dictated to us by the communities that are affected. Now, there did seem to be an acknowledgement today that if $27 million is not enough, Ottawa will step up with more cash. And in fact, it may not be enough. I spoke to an Indigenous leader today who told me that the cost of searching for missing burial sites can be as high as $50,000 per two square foot plot. Donna? David, the Catholic Church ran many, though not all, of the residential schools. Other faith leaders have apologized. And back in 2017, on a trip to the Vatican, Prime Minister Trudeau asked Pope Francis to apologize. It's one of the calls to action as well in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. Six years later, still no apology. How much is the pressure mounting? It is mounting, and it's been there ever since 2015, since the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. But the church has been resistant to apologize. But now, you're right, the pressure has renewed in the last week. And now we have two of Trudeau's cabinet ministers asking the church to reconsider. It's up to Catholics across this country to ask their church to do better. I think it is shameful that they haven't done it, that it hasn't been done. Now, ultimately, it's going to be up to the Canadian Council of Bishops to think about making some kind of recommendation to the Vatican. Donna? All right, David Aiken in Ottawa, thank you. Money and gestures will mean little if nothing is accomplished. For Indigenous communities across Canada and for the Tekemlips to Sequetmuk people, the discovery of what are believed to be unmarked graves is not only a reminder of the past, it's a reminder Indigenous children alive today still face so many disadvantages. Neetu Garcha reports from Kamloops. In downtown Kamloops, it's sadly not hard to find someone who attended the nearby residential school. Below these symbols of support, one former student sitting on the street and two triggered to speak on camera told Global News reliving the beatings at the hands of school administrators has been nearly impossible to cope with. But he's encouraging fellow survivors to seek counseling support in hopes of true healing for future generations. It's a cause Sequetmik Tribal Chief Wayne Christian has dedicated himself to. More children in care of the state now than there ever was when the Indian residential school system operated. Yes, it's a continuation. People don't see it that, they don't see that connection. It's a multi-generational legislative process. And who pays the price? It's the kids, the children. Our children pay the price. 
He's calling for the abolishment of the Indian Act and systemic racism. City officials are responding by giving those grieving some space. I think there's uh, obviously a great deal of healing that has to happen within their own community. And I think we uh, as outsiders need to be patient and let that happen. As we wait for answers on next steps and details about the discovery, any further use of ground penetrating radar, the most commonly used technique in unmarked grave surveys, may require national standards. You know, there's very clear protocols that need to be used. So I think a national strategy is really important here to ensure that everyone who's doing this type of work is following the same general procedures so that we can compare uh, the results and ensure we're providing the best possible information to communities. Communities still trying to come to grips with what's happened. Think about that, a three, four, five, six-year-old. Think about that, what they did to our people, our ancestors, our grandparents and our parents. Neetu Garja, Global News, Kamloops, B.C.